the Philadelphia 76ers have started the season in an up and down fashion. Every game they play is a game of runs and they cannot seem to sustain that play over the course of 48 minutes, let alone between games. But despite this, they have managed to come out with a positive record and still look like one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference for this season. This video will take a look at the reasons why that play has been inconsistent. What are the reasons, big and small, that are leading to them to struggle to dominate games and this regular season? And I want to begin this video by saying that the problem is not talent. The 76ers have an absolute wealth of talent from Dario Saric, Markel Fultz, Robert Covington, Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, to their bench players and the aging sniper, JJ Redick. And any of these players that I criticise in this video, it doesn't mean that they won't or aren't good, just that there are areas that need improving. And the first issue that desperately needs improving is the shooting of the 76ers point guards. Ben Simmons, Markel Fultz and even TJ McConnell are not 3 point shooters and that is hugely problematic for trying to open up the floor in a modern NBA style to provide the spacing Joel Embiid needs to operate. And realistically, this is a problem for Ben Simmons and Markel Fultz more than anyone else. These two guys are both supreme talents athletically and look to have the ability to be fantastic NBA players for years to come, unless that shooting holds them back. For me, Ben Simmons has the potential to become one of the best players in the entire league. His rare combination of size, speed, passing ability and court vision make for a fearsome player that has only really been seen in LeBron James and Magic Johnson. Simmons came into the league like a blur, and teams struggled to contain him as he blew by players and bullied his way into the paint. Once there, he wreaked havoc and tore teams apart with his devastating dunks and by putting back his own missed layups. He is also one of the most willing passers I have seen when doubled and opened up a ton of open shots for his teammates. But all of this began to change in the playoff series against Brad Stevens and the Boston Celtics. Stevens and the Celtics did what a few coaches had done on an even grander scale. They dared him to shoot every possession. The player guarding Simmons would take a few steps back and begin to wall off the paint. Then, if Ben drove, multiple players would come over to help and prevent him from getting to the rim. This forced the ball out of his hands, took away a lot of easy shots at the rim, and most importantly by having his primary defender drop back, there was less help, double teams and rotations, allowing for much tighter defense from the Celtics. Boston focused on this with great detail and transition, and every Celtic would look up to see where Ben was as they made their way back down the court. The result of this planning, Boston's strong play and other factors was a 4-1 series win and Ben Simmons having some of the worst games of his young career. The entire league took notice of this effort and in the early parts of this season you can see the same defensive scheme being employed against Ben Simmons and it is frustrating the hell out of him. His stats are relatively similar to last year and if you use this as the test then you might not even think there was a problem. But watching him, he looks different, slightly less engaged, and way less effective. He is running less pick and roll with Embiid, getting him less easy looks, and the presence of Markel Fultz is walling off the paint even more for him and preventing him from getting to the rim as easily. And this is the big problem. Both of them on the court together when Embiid. When Embiid is on the court, you want him down low. He can shoot threes and space the floors. But with the new freedom of movement emphasis, there is no one tougher to stop than Embiid down low given the ball in the post and will almost always be a score or a foul, and Embiid is lethal from the free throw line. So if Embiid is down low, then Fultz and Simmons have to be on the perimeter, and this leaves a world of help options available on Simmons and Fultz drives. If Ben beats his man, then Embiid's defender can come over, and Fultz's man can help onto Embiid to prevent the easy pass, or Fultz's man can simply sag off him and wall off the paint. This sounds like a nightmare, and it is for Brett Brown. But it's made even worse by the fact that Dario Saric is also struggling immensely to shoot from distance this season. In fact, Dario is struggling to begin this season full stop. He has looked lethargic on both ends of the court, as if he is already exhausted. After shooting 39% from three last season, he is down to shooting 23% from deep to begin this year. That is terrible. Almost as bad as Fultz and Simmons. And this has been one of the biggest issues for the 76ers. If Dario was shooting a better percentage from deep, it would help space the floor with Covington and make up a little bit for Ben and Markel's flaws, but the player they tend to rely on as the glue guy of their team is struggling to provide the glue. And this seems to be a reoccurring trend for Dario. Last season, he struggled immensely over the first 10 games as well, 
not providing the fantastic output that he would for the rest of the season. I don't doubt that Dario will regain his form and begin shooting, driving and passing to his ordinary level at some point. But how long can Brett Brown afford to keep starting him? Last year he had Redick in the starting lineup over Fultz and he helped balance the floor with his shooting as well. Fans of the 76ers have theorised that Dario might simply be exhausted from playing international basketball in the offseason. And this definitely could be a factor. Dario has played international ball for a long time and it would limit the amount of rest his body should be getting in the NBA offseason. Brown could bench Dario for a few weeks and allow him to rest while he inserts Redick back into the starting lineup to balance the floor a little better. But these are all patches to fix a bigger problem. Fultz, Simmons, Embiid, Dario and Covington are the young core of the 76ers for the future. If they want to win championships, their best bet is for the five of them to be able to share the court long term and grow chemistry and a defensive and offensive system. Three of these players can shoot, and I am confident that Dario will gain his stroke this year, but Fultz and Simmons desperately need to get a jumper and three-point shot. Markel was actually an elite three-point shooter in college who would pull up in the pick and roll, shoot off the dribble and off the catch and shoot as well, nailing them at a 40% rate, but he forgot how to shoot. He's working his way back into it and has been making some threes and some mid-range jump shots also. He worked with Drew Hanlon this offseason and his jumper appears less hitched and smoother than it was last year. But it is far from perfect, and until he proves he can knock down threes with regularity, teams will come off him and help like crazy. But the talent was there once, and the 76ers will be confident that it'll eventually come back. Simmons on the other hand has never been able to shoot a three, and his mid-range jump shot has never been consistent and never threatening and he desperately needs to be able to shoot a jump shot in order to fix the Sixers' problems. If he could just hit a shot from around the free throw line extended, it would force defenders to come out and guard him. It would also allow him to score more easily, and even if he hit just two or three jumpers a game, he would immediately score so much more and open the game up for his entire team. But that isn't happening this season. Simmons has said the jump shot is a long-term project for his development. I truly hope he works on this and develops that three-point shot, as if he can do it at a decent level, he really could be an incredibly special player. But this season, the 76ers need to make a few changes in order to really dominate in the way that they can. I don't mind Fultz and Simmons starting together, but if they do, I think they need to start Redick over Saric until he gains his energy and shot back. With only Covington really spacing the floor, the team is just way too inconsistent to start games and it allows for serious double and triple teams on Embiid and Simmons. Then, if they start Redick, I'd move Fultz onto the bench after 4-5 to five minutes and let him help run the second unit. This would allow for the 76ers to play Fultz for every minute that Simmons sits as his primary role. This would greatly mitigate the spacing issues by having neither of them have to play off ball anywhere near as much as they currently do. Now, obviously, if you want to pump minutes into these guys, then they need to play some minutes together. Something I'd really like to see would be running Fultz at the point and Simmons at the 5 while Embiid sits and gets his rest. Ben as a screen setter who can dive to the rim and then pass out of the catch would be really interesting. He would also be able to force Mitch matches as he can't put bigger centers onto him without him just blowing by them. It would also allow them to put three shooters around them and space the floor. These types of coaching changes are tough to make mid-season, but I think Brett Brown really needs to consider them. The other change he needs to make is to implement tighter offensive rules for his team. He's previously stated that he wants to allow his team to run a free-flowing offense and not call as many plays as most other teams. At times this is fine, and when you have a great point guard like Simmons, you can get away with letting them pick their spots and running the offense. But the 76ers offense when they let them run free is a lot of dribble handoffs, a lot of posting up Embiid, a lot of isolation, and let's face it, a lot of turnovers. And this could be fine for the most part, but it can get a little bit predictable over the course of the game, and this is what is resulting in the turnovers. When you have so many amazing players on your roster with unique athleticism and skill sets, you can run different types of plays than most teams. I would love to see the 76ers try and use a few more sets to get easy baskets for their guys when compared to what they run now. It would allow Brett Brown to call sets for players who have a hot hand, and also to abuse mismatches more than they currently do. If they can make some of these adjustments to get better looks and better spacing on the court, then I think they are still a serious threat to the Eastern Conference. And mainly because Joel Embiid is playing like an absolute MVP, 
and one of the best five players in the entire league. As mentioned before, Joel is taking advantage of the free motion rules and is drawing a lot of fouls, but he also looks better in every aspect of the game. His post game has been incredible, forcing defenders to bite on fakes, get them behind him, and then finish with an absolute ferocity. But by far his biggest improvement has been his fitness. Embiid has had his full first offseason and used it to get his body right and work on his overall fitness base. The result, he has no minutes restrictions, and is playing a ton more than he did last year. He has yet to miss a game and has been the offensive and defensive anchor for the 76ers. This is a once in a lifetime talent, and not since Shaq have we seen someone so big and strong in the paint. Even some of the biggest centers in the league can't handle his raw size and strength. And this is all balanced by his ability to shoot the ball, handle the ball, and his outrageous touch on floaters and hooks. Embiid is my favorite player to watch in the league. He represents everything amazing about NBA big men the size, the athleticism, and the outrageous skills that some players at 6'6 six six don't even have. Even if the 76ers don't make some of the changes I outlined in this video, they will likely still make the playoffs and be a threat this year, simply due to the talent of Simmons, the two-way play of Covington, and all the other talent on the roster. But they'll mainly make it because of Embiid and this absurd level of two-way play that only he is bringing in the NBA this year. If they do make the changes, then they might actually be a threat for the championship, but it won't be until Simmons and Fultz can shoot the ball that they'll actually win one. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications as well, and let me know in the comments what you think of the 76ers and all their problems.